Let's take a look at the main windows and main sections of a Studio One song. First of all, you'll notice over here, we have these three options down here. Now these are very useful and you'll also note that there's different shortcuts that we have available. So for example, if I hover my cursor over here, you'll see F2, F3, and F5, which are the stock keyboard shortcuts or key commands that are mapped out for these different sections over here. Let's go ahead and just close our browser for now. What we're looking at right here is the arrange window within Studio One. Now, if we wanted to see the console, we could go ahead and click this over here. I don't have any tracks created currently, so let's go ahead and let's create some tracks. And we're gonna get into detail on tracks later, but for now, let's just create a couple different tracks. We'll say a couple different stereo tracks and a couple different mono tracks. Now, one thing you'll note over here is that as I move this over here, or if I move this over here, that it's following in the console. So we have our console section and we have our range section. Now, in addition to that, we also have this inspector section, and this basically works based on the track that you have selected. So if I was to select track one and select the inspector, now we have the fader section. In addition to that, we have the inserts, the sends, mute, solo, record enable, monitor, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also have some settings for some time stretch stuff and different ways in which Studio One handles tempo, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. What this video is about is simply understanding the basics of the screen. Now, in addition to having the console view, we kind of have some sub views within the views. So for example, if I select this section over here, you'll notice this blue highlighted area that's around my console. We also have the inputs. This is the inputs that are available for this different interface that I'm using right now. We have the outputs. These are all the different outputs that are available. We have an external section, which shows us any external devices that are connected to your system. And we're gonna have a look at that in a later video. In addition to that, we have our instrument rack. Let's just go ahead and hide this for now because we currently don't have any virtual instruments in this section over here. And then if I was to go ahead, for example, and let's just take this track, it's already set to the proper input. Let's just go ahead and record enable this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna record some audio over here. So we have some audio to work with. Let's go ahead and push stop. If I wanted to see or edit this, we have a editor view within Studio One. So by double clicking this, you notice that we have this editor that becomes available. And we can also click this edit tab over here. Now this works regardless of whether it's audio or MIDI information, this edit tab will display it in a separate window. Now, all of these windows that we have over here, we have the option as well to detach them by selecting this little arrow. I can, for example, detach this. So if I had a multi-screen setup, I could simply move this off to another screen. And then of course, we could even go maximize with this and we could go full screen. So now essentially we have these two different windows and then I could use any shortcuts within my OS to swap back and forth between them. Let's go ahead and let's reattach this window though, or redock it to the actual main window. And let's go ahead, we'll choose the mixer, you notice that within the mixer, we have the same option. So over here, we can detach, we can maximize this. Then of course, by using any commands within our OS, we can choose the different screens that we want. Let's go ahead and reattach this by clicking this arrow over here. And now we've reattached this dock. Last but not least, we have the browser. And the browser has a lot of different subsections as well. So for example, you'll see that Studio One has automatically organized some subcategories over here. I've got all my virtual instruments available that I can drag into my projects. I've got my different effects, so all of my different plugins. I've got my loops. I've got a files tab over here where I can choose different files and different sections over here. I've got a cloud tab, which is useful for downloading presets and doing some shopping. And then I've got the pool that exists from within my actual project. Anything that's been recorded or imported into my project will be available. And then in each of these sections, we've got a search function as well. So for example, if I wanted to search for something, I could very easily use this search option. So let's do a quick recap over here. We have our console. We can get to our console by clicking this mix tab over here. We've got our inspector, which works based on the track that we've selected over here. We've got our main arrange window, which is this section over here. And then we have our browser. 
Now we also have a couple different options as well. So for example, if I wanted to look at my quantize options, you'll notice that I have the option to detach this as well. And then this can be kind of a floating standalone window that you make available. Let's go ahead and reattach that. In addition to that, we also have another option where I can also view my strip silence over here. And this can be detached as well. So these windows can be free floating if you want them to be, or you can attach them and dock them to the main section over here and make them visible quite simply by doing this. In addition, we also have an audio bend menu as well, which can be detached as well. Really quickly, let's open up our browser and let's just drag in an instrument. We'll drag in an instance of impact, see how easy that is in Studio One. We'll go ahead and we'll create a quick MIDI part over here. And then I can just go ahead and draw some MIDI information in here. So you can see now that the same editor that we have that worked for the audio by double clicking over here, let's close this. This also works for any MIDI information that we have as well. Okay, so now that we've got an understanding of everything here and how this works, in the next video, let's take an overview of all of the different track types that are available within Personas Studio One version four. We'll catch you for more in the next video.